protests continue and abated across Manipur Valley against brutal killing of two Meitei students by Kuki militants. Many demand death penalty of the culprits. JAC against brutal killing of Chinkhanganba and Ngaleba demands NIA prop in killing of Chinkhanganba and Ngaleba. And Assam Manipuris warns of stern steps against Mizoram government for helping Chinkukizo. Hello, Kurumjiri. This is Northeast Window, and you're watching English News with me, Jesse Thiam. Now, the news in detail. Protest demonstrations continue and abated, demanding justice for Hizam Lintoingambi and Fizam Hamanjit, who were brutally murdered by Kuki terrorists. Tanglai Hada Manipur Kanmalup Oinam organized a sit in at Oinam Bazaar today. Speaking on the sideline of the sit-in protest, Secretary of Oinamaira Paibilup, C.H. Anobi, vehemently condemned the atrocities carried out by security forces against students carrying out peace rally demanding justice for the ruthless killing of two students by Kuki Naro narcoterrorists. When the people of Manipur are praying for peace in the state, violence seems to be increasing daily. In the case of New Parrot, Ministers, MLAs and central leaders raised their voices and portrayed Meites in a bad light across the globe. While the merciless killing of two young Meite students do not seem to bother them at all, contended C.H. Anobi. <laughs> Thobal Apunbalup also staged a sit-in protest at Thobal Mela ground demanding swift action against the brutal murder of two Meite students by Kuki Terrace. One of the leaders of the loop termed the murder by Kuki Terrace as a cowardly act. He said Thobal Apunbalup strongly condemns the killing of innocent students. He questioned the silence of state and central governments when they had raised a strong voice against the nude parrot where the ladies were not even wrapped. He also added that the loop condemns the atrocities carried out by security forces on students by using rubber bullet, tear gas, smoke bomb, etc. The loop also appealed to the relevant authorities to find the culprits behind a brutal murder of Hizam Nintoingambi and Fizam Hemanjit and punish them as per law. <laughs> Students of Jingdongpok High School Hero 
also carried out a protest demonstration at the school's campus today. K. H. Srinivas, a class 9 student at the school, condemned the murder of two major students by cookie terrorists and appealed to the government to punish the culprits at the earliest. Various slogans were also chanted during the protest. Okiba, July Tang Tarutagi Mapam Kangana Makiba Mahiroi, in Twangambi Amadi, Emaji Ani Shigi Miata Shibu Yaning the Pongo Chiaduna, Mashi Shingo Mo High School Gi, Mahiroi Kuding Makna, Miata Shingadu Topi Duna, Akpa the Nipi View High Duna, Mashigi Hormashi Pankok Chabani. Saturday Punche, Long Lip, Mani Pot, Mahiroi Hatba, Saturday Punche, Manipuri Youth Front of Assam (MYFA) also strongly condemned the murder of two Mayday students by Cookie terrorists. In a press release, the Youth Front recalled that the Chin Cookie Zo terrorists have been waging war against Mayday since May 3rd this year. The dream of a separate administration demanded by these terrorists shall remain a dream, added the Front. It also condemned the atrocities carried out by central forces against students and Mayrapaipis. It warned of stern actions by Maytays living outside of Manipur if the Chin Kuki Zo terrorists do not stop this war against Maytays in Manipur. Manipuri Youth's Front of Assam also warned of intense agitations against the Mizoram government if it does not stop helping Chin Kuki Zo at the earliest. It also appealed to the Manipur government and central government to restore peace and normalcy in Manipur at the earliest and to provide capital punishment to the killers of two Mayday students. The Youth Front also urged the Manipur government to take up steps for seamless travel of Mayday passengers on Imphal Ziri Road. Manipuri Kanbalup Makal Kassar Assam also expressed deep anguish over the merciless killing of two major students by Kuki terrorists. In a press release, Makal said it is deeply disturbed and anguished by the viral images of these two major students over social media. It termed the act by the Kuki terrorists as beastly and considers the act as a form of challenging the Maytays. Cookies should not forget that the Maytays residing outside of Manipur will not remain a mute spectator to their acts of terror in the war since May 3rd, where they have been brutally murdered, Maytays. McCall demands the culprits behind murder of two Maytay students be caught at the earliest and provide a death penalty. It also condemned the atrocities carried out by security forces upon students who were merely demanding justice for Hizam Lintuangambi and Fizam Hemanjit. Shillong Manipur Students' Unions also condemned the brutal murder of two Maytay students by Kuki terrorists. In a press release, the union appealed to the state and central governments to abrogate the Sioux agreement with Kuki terrorists rather than maintaining a deafening silence. It also appealed to the government to punish the culprits behind the merciless killing of the two major students. Manipur Government Higher Secondary Lecturers Welfare Association also condemned the merciless killing of two major students by cookie terrorists. In a press release, the association demanded befitting punishments of the culprits to ensure these heinous crimes do not occur in the future. The Manipur Naga Revolutionary Front, MNRF, has condemned the murder of Hizam Lintuangambi and Fizam Hemanjit. In a press release, MNRF said it is deeply saddened by the barbaric, inhuman and tragic killing of two Mayday students by unidentified miscreants. Words are inadequate to express our profound grief and sorrow over the untimely demise of these young promising lad and a girl whose lives have been cut short by this unforeseen event, it further added. Our heart goes out to the bereaved families and this hour of grief and sorrow and prays earnestly to Almighty God that they will have the courage and strength to bear the irreparable 
I beg your pardon, the irreparable loss. We also pray for the departed souls to rest in eternal peace. The Manipur Naga Revolutionary Front fervently implores and urges both the two warring communities to shun violence and seek peace at the earliest in the overall interest of the entire people of Manipur. Further, the MNRF prays unceasingly for the return of peace, prosperity and equanimity in the state of Manipur. Joint Action Committee against the brutal killing of Chinkanganba and Ngalaiba has appealed to the Manipur government to hand over investigation into the brutal murder of Irengbom Chinkanganba and Sagosen Ngalaiba Meite by cookie terrorists to NIA. Addressing media today, along with Sekmai Jeng Kuno, RYDO Club, JAC and the family members, President of the JAC, Y. Roshni, questioned the inaction by the Manipur government, even though a six-minute viral video has been doing the rounds all over social media of Kuki terrorists brutally murdering Chinkanganba and Ngalaiba, who went to help villagers at Lake Thabi under Sekmai Assembly constituency in July. Roshni further demanded handing over the cases of brutal murders of two students and Chinkai Nganba and Ngaleba to CNI or NIA and provide befitting punishments to the culprits. Convener of the JAC, Thongnaozam Ayang Lema, condemned the atrocities carried out by security forces upon students who were carrying a peaceful rally against the brutal murder of two Meite students. She demanded the central forces to leave Manipur at the earliest. Meanwhile, Manipur Commission for Protection of Child Rights has appealed to the authorities concerned not to adopt widespread systematic and institutionalized physical abuse and create psychological damage of young people that will give long-lasting negative impact in their future lives. The appeal comes in the wake of grievous injury caused by security forces while students have been protesting in the last couple of days after the murder of two Mayday students, Hizam Lintoingambi and Fizam Hamanjit by Kuki terrorist went viral on social media. In a press release, the commission said the strategy and approach for controlling students must be different from adult protesters. If required, security forces should use less injurious means such as warnings through loudspeaker, ensuring adequate barricades and use of water cannon. The commission further said excessive use of force on children is unbecoming of a democratic country like India. A training manual for security forces, juvenile justice, human rights and decent mob control standard must be introduced contended Manipur Commission for Protection of Child Rights. Former Speaker of Manipur Legislative Assembly and Kundrakpam MLA Tokjom Lokeshwar made a scathing attack on Chief Minister and other MLAs of Manipur camping at Delhi today. The Kundrakpam MLA appealed to the Chief Minister and MLAs to meet with the Prime Minister before a civil war erupts in the state. He came down heavily on the government, saying there is no point holding the chair when peace and normalcy cannot be restored in the state. 
Tokjom Lokeshor was addressing media at his official residence in Babupara today, along with the working president of MPCC, K.H. Deva Brata, sharing the pain with parents of two young Maytay students who were brutally murdered by Kugi terrorists, Lokeshor maintained that the inability to retrieve their mortal remains proved that the BJP-led government is weak. He said it is extremely unfortunate that the Prime Minister broke his silence over a viral video of the nude parrot of two girls but continued to remain silent when two Meite students have been mercilessly killed by cookie terrorists. He questioned the silence of Chief Minister Biren over the brutal murder when he himself took part in protest against the nude parrot. <laughs> Government of India has ordered premature repatriation of IPS officer Rakesh Balwal to Manipur Kadra. According to an order by Deputy Secretary to the Government of India, Balwal IPS MA 2012, has been repatriated from AGMUT to Manipur Kadra. The order, a copy of which lies with GNS, has been passed following the proposal of the Ministry of Home Affairs. The approval has been granted by the Appointments Committee of the Cabinet. Almost a month after the proposal by the MHA, Rakesh Balwal is presently posted as SSP Srinagar and would now be posted in Manipur. United Naga Council UNC has reiterated its rejection of the declaration of seven new districts in 2016 by the then government of Manipur. In a press release, UNC said in the wake of the ethnic conflict that has engulfed the state of Manipur since May 3rd this year and the violently manifested geographical and demographic contestation between the conflicting parties, it has become critical for the Nagas to bring out into the public domain the unsettled issue of the rejection of the creation of seven new districts on 8th December 2016 by the then ruling Congress state government of Manipur. The Nagas demonstrated the rejection with the mass rally held in Naga district headquarters on 15th December 2016 and the 139 days of economic blockade along the national highways. The United Naga Council has clearly placed in the public domain and in its memorandum to the government of India that the Nagas will not accept any disintegration of Naga land or any act that will adversely affect the interest of the Nagas while attempting to address demands by any other community. The Tonkal Baptist Churches Association has strongly condemned Prime Minister Narendra Modi's call for an hour-long nationwide cleanliness drive 
on a Sunday. Ahead of Gandhi Jayanti Day on 2nd October, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has issued a clarion call to people across the country to participate in one hour of Shramdan for a cleanliness drive on 1st October, which falls on a Sunday. During a press conference held at its headquarters, Education Secretary of TBCA, Dr. Temre Sang Khoram stated that cleanliness is one of the core techniques, one of the core teachings of Christianity. However, conducting a cleanliness drive on their holy worship day amounts to desacralizing their faith. The church association further appealed to church members to avoid conducting cleanliness drives on Sunday and suggested setting aside another day to honor Prime Minister Modi's call. Amid the ongoing crisis in Manipur, Maite girl Narem Roshibina Devi has backed a silver medal in women's 60kg Sanda event of Wushu in the ongoing Asian Games. Hailing from Kwashipai village in Bishnapur district adjoining Churajanpur, which is dominated by the rival Kuki ethnic community, Roshibina fought a valiant fight against Chinese heavyweight Wu Xiaowei before going down 0-2 in two rounds in the final. The conflict between the two communities in Manipur has killed scores of people and injured so many more. Manipur is burning. Fighting is going on in Manipur. I can't go to my village. I want to dedicate this medal to those who are protecting us and suffering there, said Roshibina after clinching the silver. The Manipuri athlete was crying inconsolably as she added, I don't know what will happen. The fighting has been continuing. When will it stop and return to normal life of earlier times? Eminent agricultural scientist M.S. Swaminathan, regarded as the chief architect of India's Green Revolution, has passed away today. He was 98. Swaminathan who breathed his last at 11.20 a.m., is survived by his wife and three daughters. Swaminathan was credited with the country's Green Revolution, which helped attain a huge jump in production of rice and wheat in the 1960s and 1970s. Born on August 7, 1925, in Kumbakonam in Tamil Nadu, after a short stint abroad, Swaminathan returned to India in 1954 and was associated with several path-breaking agriculture schemes of various governments. He also established the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation MSSRF, in 1988 as a not-for-profit trust with proceeds from the first World Food Prize that he received in 1987. The Foundation's aim is to accelerate use of modern science and technology for agricultural and rural development to improve lives and livelihoods of communities. An Indian national has been convicted by a federal jury in Michigan for orchestrating a 2.8 million US dollar healthcare fraud and engaging in money laundering. According to court documents and evidence presented at trial, Yogesh Pancholi, aged 43, owned and operated Shring Home Care Incorporation, a home health company based in the U.S. state of Michigan. Despite being excluded from billing Medicare, Pancholi purchased Shring using the names, signatures, and personal identifying information of others to conceal his ownership of the company, a statement said. In a two-month period, Pancholi and his co-conspirators built and were paid nearly US dollar 2.8 million by Medicare for services that were never provided. Pancholi then transferred these funds through bank accounts belonging to shell corporations and eventually into his accounts in India. After being indicted, and on the eve of trial, Pancholi, using a pseudonym, wrote false and malicious emails to various federal government agencies, alleging a government witness had committed various crimes and should not be allowed to remain in the U.S. 
in an attempt to keep the witness from testifying, federal prosecutors said. The federal jury in the Eastern District of Michigan convicted Pancholi of conspiracy to commit health care and wire fraud, two counts of substantive health care fraud, two counts of money laundering, two counts of aggravated identity theft, and one count of witness tampering. The sentencing is scheduled for January 10. He faces a mandatory minimum penalty of two years in prison for aggravated identity theft, a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison on each of the conspiracy of and witness tampering convictions, and a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison on each of the health care fraud and money laundering counts. And before we end, let's take a quick look at the headlines once again. Protests continue unabated across Manipur Valley against the brutal killing of two Métis students by cooking militants. Many demand death penalty of the culprits. JAC against brutal killing of Chinkhanganba and Ngaleba demands NIA prop in killing of Chinkhanganba and Ngaleba. And Assam Manipuris warns of stern steps against Mizoram government for helping Chin Kukizo. And that is all we have for now. But for more news updates, keep watching Northeast Window.